to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. The Bible tells us about this Hebrew boy who was saved from death, and then he ran away from Egypt and was at the backside of the mountain tending Jethro, his father in lordship, and then he's open to an encounter. Before he discovered any other thing, he discovered God, the God of the Hebrews. Moses said, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say to them, The God of our fathers hath sent me to you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Very good question. And God said unto Moses, Yadhe Wahe, Yahweh, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you tell them. It is true that they want to be delivered, but this is what I desire. I desire that they know me. I am has sent you. Are we together? So the first thing you have to discover is God most people don't pay attention to God can I tell you this in your spiritual training with God let me give you an advice and you can use this as a template to mentor other believers when you are starting with believers don't start teaching them things about success prosperity when you really want to mature believers this is the way God led us this is the way God led our fathers this is the way God led people from scripture when you meet God he does not talk about any other thing yet himself until he reveals himself so when you are training believers you must take dedicated time to expose them to God everything God passion for God fire for God then when that foundation of God is settled you can now begin to delve into other subjects if you compromise this you're going to have people who are lopsided in their growth the formula is in the beginning God the first thing you discover is God number two for the sake of time the second discovery is yourself the second discovery is yourself now that you have discovered god you can discover yourself if you do not know who you are sinaj taught us in her song that if you don't know who you are there are many things you will not be able to walk in you cannot walk in power you cannot walk in miracles you cannot live a life of favor why you don't know who you are the nation of israel forgot their identity that they were a covenant people and when they were sent to go and spy the land they came back with an evil report they said we were like grasshoppers god didn't say it satan didn't say it they said it to themselves it's not like satan said repeat after me you are grasshoppers we are grasshoppers no no by themselves they call themselves grasshoppers i'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles i live a life of favor i know i'm walking in power i live a life of favor very important you must know who you are we teach in our school of ministry and, and and there is a course where we teach the students who you are you know and I teach them in that course that there is something called identity crisis 
let's borrow two minutes of their lecture there is something called identity crisis you know what identity crisis is identity crisis is the resultant effect of not comprehending your worth the moment you do not know who you are the devil and men and this bedeviled world will paint a picture that you are not there are many people today who are under needless pressure trying to be who and what they are not it's not in the blueprint of their destiny because i taught you here remember i don't know what discussion we're having when i taught you that psychologically speaking there are certain indices that measure fulfillment is that true yes one of it is security another is variety one of it is growth another is love and acceptance there is a craving in the human nature for love and acceptance and chances are that if you have not stayed with the word are we together now yes like bishop david oedipo will say to find out your picture from scripture to be able to find out this is what god has said concerning me this is who i am based on what scripture said not based on what your mind has said not based on what your background has said was it not paul that said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without effect your background has a voice remember who you are failures all through and you hear that voice then unfortunately and i know and i pray that it's changing thank god for christian schools but if you are not fortunate to go to a school that calls upon the name of the lord now you hear another voice added to that negativity by by teachers and all of that they look at you and say you are dull you are almost demonic i don't know how you got here i don't even know where you are going and i can tell you because you respect them you will believe it and then with every sense of respect and apology parents have a major role in in destroying the self-worth of children by the time you begin to minister words curses and words that are not consistent with scripture by the time an average child is 10 12 years subliminally he has already received all kinds of suggestions about who he is so now that they think they are weak the devil will now begin to market templates that can make you belong that's why people join occultic societies that's why people join all kinds of things they say they want to belong when satan came to jesus the first test was the test of identity the first test the very first test was a test of identity if you are truly the son of god turn these stones to bread jesus said i don't need to prove to you the voice already spoke that i am his beloved son man shall not live by bread alone but every word you had the word when he announced it everything under heaven had it including you don't ask me that question you already know i'm the son of god so when life and friends and society sadly and the sociological context of our world now forces you to do things and be things to show you are great you can tell them no 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 i'm a civilized person but i have limits i know who i am don't just tell me to dress the way you want to show i am civil to talk the way you want to live the way you want no within the boundary of of a civilized world i will conform to that which is an advantage but i know who i am based on scripture I am the beloved of God behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the sons of God there are many names that the Bible calls us light salt ambassadors kings priests are we learning now so you discover God you discover yourself the next thing that you discover under that stage of discovery is you discover your abilities your giftings and your abilities please pay attention please pay attention there is always a rod in your hand oh dear moses that is the rod you will use to walk signs and wonders it is not only god you discover it is not only yourself you discover there is something god has given you that is the rod you are going to use moses be careful to not throw that rod one day you will need it to pass the red sea one day to become the symbol of your leadership can i tell you this 
everyone here seated looking at me following online and will be following by way of rebroadcast or whatever platform it comes through can i tell you sincerely there is something god has put within you that the world is desperately waiting for to receive this is not just some motivational talk this is truth based on scripture nobody came here empty everybody came here as an expression of the fullness of the life and the power of jesus if you are joseph we need your leadership and your ability to interpret dreams if you are deborah we need your strength and your dexterity in war if you are moses we need your passion to be able to communicate with god and prophetically drive the people out of captivity everybody in scripture that was used of god there were things god gave them david could sing he used that grace to write the psalms today that has brought all kinds of deliverance david was a warrior and he used to fight valiantly in his lifetime david had leadership everything david had eventually was featured in the palace what do you have in your hand that was what the lord told moses what do you have in your house second kings chapter 5 second kings chapter 4 please 4 i meant to say the bible says there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet second kings 4 from verse 1 she said unto elisha my servant thy husband is dead and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the lord and the creditor aha uh -huh, the creditor is come to take him to take unto him my two sons to be born men next verse please and elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee and he asked a question he says tell me what hast thou in your house hear the woman's reply this is the reply of many of us when destiny calls on you what do you have in this house of earthen vessel here's what we say nothing thine handmaid had not anything in the house except a pot of oil i have nothing except an ability to sing i have nothing except great charisma and leadership prowess i have nothing except passion and hunger for god i have nothing except the ability to be trusted be careful what you call nothing be careful what you call nothing i have nothing except some degree of business acumen i have nothing except that when i sleep whatever i see in my dream truly happens i have nothing except the dream that i have that i saw myself on a crusade ground while i was sleeping on a mat in a hut i saw myself speaking before nations that's all that i have he says what do you have you must discover what you have can i tell you this every great man that you admire today whether in the kingdom or in the secular whether in ministry in politics in business they were men and women who among other factors got to a point in their lives where they discovered that there is something valuable that god has given me hear me your sense of self-worth among other factors is tied to the perception of the value you have about yourself we live respectfully speaking in a very fake world today where everybody tries to do this and leave this if you are not wearing this oh how how much is your shoe two thousand naira and people laugh as two thousand naira did you make it yourself and people laugh and make you feel stupid and you stand there wondering what to do and then you go out of your way to live a fake life you've heard me say don't fake what can be real Your self-worth is never about any exterior thing around you. Thank God for the beauty, the glamour, the grace that is wonderful. But if you put your trust in anything outside you, you are insecure. Can I tell you, most of the things that we face in our world today, especially as it makes for inter 
personal relationships and all of that they are a derivative of this secret frustration psychologists have said it and i've taught you again that you look at life from the lens of the perception of your value if you feel you are not valuable you will interpret life from the lens of that frustration if you are a happy man the world is a happy place for you if you are a sad person the world is a sad place for you if you are a godly person in the midst of all the decadence that goes on you can see god you can see what he's doing if you are someone who is a failure you would look at life from the lens of your experience what sees thou is a is a report card is god speaking to us tonight so the first stage when you are preparing for greatness is discovery discovery of god as the almighty the beginning and the end the one who holds your life and your destiny and then number two discovery of yourself so that you become healed once and for all from the scar that society will try to bring as a result of the injury that they will give you for not trying to conform to certain patterns that society depicts to measure greatness so if you do not find 10 cars in my house for instance if you do not find a great mansion for instance if you do not find me wearing all the designers that should be nothing is wrong with these things in themselves if you don't see me speaking in a certain way if you don't see me snapping in front of an expensive vehicle society says you are failure and many of us have been deceived to believe it so we live our lives in secret and open frustrations trying to be what god already said you are are we blessed and then the discovery of your potentials i first heard this from the lips of my greatly revered mentor in life and in death dr miles monroe when I read his book on discovering your potentials, when he said, here's what he said, that the wealthiest place on earth is not the gold mines in sub-Saharan Africa around, it's not, it's not the oil mines in Nigeria and Iraq and all of that. He said the most expensive, the wealthiest place on earth, he called it the symmetry why because that is where books died that were not written that's where dreams died that did not come to pass and he said little did he know that he would not live so long he said his assignment was not just longevity alone his focus was efficiency that jesus lived for 33 and a half years and his impact till eternity will continue to be felt and he gave his all and truly he died empty one of the last books he wrote before he went to be with the Lord is called passing it on the principle of transgenerational relevance and legacy a man that cheated death indeed are we blessed you must find what it is that you have in your hands can I tell you this when the woman was saying nothing except a pot of oil the pot was hearing her and the oil was hearing her and here's what the oil was saying you call me nothing the same way your writing ability is saying do you know you can write about revivals is it not robert Lerden that wrote one book god's generals that set fire today only god knows how many ministries have come from that book all kinds of books gifts Billy Graham discovered that he had the ability to love the Lord and to communicate effectively. And he deployed that gift in his evangelical operation and today arguably one of the greatest evangelists in modern history who has lived. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your house? It is time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit and take in intentional inventory of everything that constitutes an advantage in your life because everything God gave you that constitutes an advantage will be used for your destiny can I tell you this Satan will usually flash to your face all the negative things around your life many of us do not see anything glorious about ourselves 
you are poor he will make sure you see that one you don't speak well he will make sure you see that one you spend 15 years in the village he will drum it to your ears but the wonderful things god has made out of your life he will not allow you see in the name of jesus may you see clearly can i tell you this our fathers of faith in this nation fathers of faith across africa every one of them got to a point where they had to deploy that gift that god gave them to be able to serve the purposes of god today if you do not find that rod in your hand you will be ashamed when you stand before pharaoh because there will be nothing that would demonstrate the glory of god it was the rod god gave moses that was used to prove the almightiness of god if you neglect your gift there will be nothing in your life to prove indeed that god is mighty over you you must obtain grace from god seated here looking at me following in all the overflows outside from whatever nation whatever tv station there are people listening to me you have dreams god has planted things in your life can i tell you this when it looks like certain individuals are superstars the difference between a superstar and whatever is this discovery nobody is intrinsically exceptional above any other person no everybody born of a woman was once a baby in the hand of that woman even if you were born royalty you were still a baby jesus as the son of god did not automatically become savior even though he was the word he had to go through this system of discovery at age 12 the bible tells us that he was at the temple what do you think he was doing at the temple he was learning everybody said discovery pay attention to this teaching because many of us are superstitiously hoping that destiny will just happen we are superstitiously hoping that greatness will just happen one day go better we say in this side of god's kingdom and it is so wrong provided you don't do anything until that one day more than admiring great people more than commending people who have done exploits in the kingdom whether in music whether in career in politics don't just sit down and clap for people use their lives as an inspiration that this man was once a baby in the hand of a woman what is the difference between this man and me not in a competitive way not in a way that communicates jealousy but in a way that challenges you greatness is simply the world acknowledging you for serving them effectively with your gift the feedback you receive from your world and your generation for effectively serving them with your gift is what we call greatness it appears as honor it has appears as priority living it appears as whatever it is but the truth is that when you use this that god has given you you discover it you have begun your journey to greatness let me do a quick recap and we move forward that there are two main phases when it has to do with manifesting greatness in the kingdom the first um, season is called the season of preparation and i'm now defining the activities that happen under that season that that season of preparation is broken into three phases phase one is discovery you discover god you discover you you discover what he has given you say amen, amen. the second thing that you do in the second phase under preparation is called development the phase of development now that you have discovered God now that you have discovered you now that you have discovered what God has given you look up please Miles Monroe calls it and the dictionary defines it as potential do you know what potential is potential is what a thing can become but it's not potential potential means untapped um, resources whether human whether material whether mental when you talk of a potential or you talk of a thing in its potential form it means that there is value that can be derived from it but not at that state for instance 
we celebrate and we thank god for the gift of crude oil in this country but if you happen to go and watch them mine oil when oil actually comes out and you see it you will run away from that place because it's a dark slippery paste of smelly substance and yet that is what has powered the economy of many nations that oil that comes out is not the one your car is looking for that's not the one you will queue to pay for discovery is good but can i tell you this there are many people with dreams with notebooks full of dreams the greatest way to bring your dream to pass is to wake up from that dream if you wake up from that dream then you are ready to make that dream come to pass but for as long as it remains a dream it remains there forever everybody who turned their dreams to reality did that by first waking up please look at me you must obtain grace from God to refine two aspects of your life number one you must refine your gifts number two in fact in order of priority when it has to do with development you must refine your mind then you must refine your gift if you refine your gift alone you will still be frustrated there are two aspects that must be refined when it has to do with development number one is your mind number two your potential the mind is a very important component as far as excelling and greatness is concerned in this kingdom why because you see the bible tells us that um how does it put it now it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset and a belief system philippians 2 5 that jesus had that made him great he didn't just say let this power be in you it's not only the power that was in jesus that you need you also need the mind that was in jesus without the mind that was in jesus the power that was on him will be useless in your life you need both his mind and his power everybody say his mind many people want the power that was in jesus but you do not want his belief systems your belief system is a summation of your paradigms your viewpoints your perspectives can i tell you we are made or destroyed by our belief systems i have taught it here there's no need going to, you know to share it again but maybe just for one or two minutes let me tell you this that our mindsets are formed largely from number one culture number two our past experiences is that true number three our failures number four our association number five our levels of exposure all of these are factors that become the shapers of our belief systems the average person in nigeria and africa by the time you are age 10 by the time you are a teenager you would have been exposed to too many activities that would have respectfully speaking dehumanized and demean your perception of yourself therefore the bible says romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies it says a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed say transform what does it mean to transform to evolve into superior versions of yourself that's what it means to be transformed to be transformed means to evolve into superior versions of yourself like a fly evolves from egg lava pupa and then adult you must obtain grace from god to evolve you've heard me teach it that your destiny is looking for you but not this current version of you the version of you that your destiny is looking for you are yet to become it the most important thing about success and greatness is not the achievements is what you become or have to become to obtain it what you have to become to be great is greater than the greatness itself are we blessed don't forget this the most important component as far as your growing into greatness is concerned is not the greatness itself and the possibilities that surround that realm is the person you are forced to become 
until you attain that greatness becoming is greater than doing you really become successful more from becoming than doing but the people that do know their god knowledge they shall be strong becoming then they shall do exploits it is knowledge transformation and then action not knowledge and action knowledge transformation is the reason why we do right things and get wrong results because you only do right things when you have become everybody say development i'm challenging everyone under the sound of my voice therefore that we have to obtain grace from god if we are truly serious about manifesting our kingdom destinies and rising unto greatness we must obtain grace from god having discovered our giftings we must begin an intentional a radical and non-emotional non-emotional project of transformation when you contend for transformation emotionally you will not go far when you feel sleepy when you are awake when you feel angry when you feel hungry no you must enter a covenant with yourself that come rain and come sunshine every 24 hour that god gives me will a major part of it will be invested in my transformation how are you transformed the bible tells you number one through the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind by supplying into your mental space superior information superior word-based information and then repeating them until they superimpose the negative thoughts that have surrounded your mind hearing the truth once is not enough you must hear it again and again until it gains dominance over your mind then the bible now says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you can declare in prayer and then all of these other things and then the bible also says for as he thinketh in his heart or mind he says so is he he didn't say so he will become you already are what you are thinking mental transformation is a miracle believers especially people who are largely spiritual and passionate about god because of that drive to encounter the holy spirit the power the anointing of the holy spirit many times we who god has trusted with grace for the miraculous for signs and wonders we have um we have fallen prey as far as emphasizing the importance of being mentally transformed because we feel what is the need for having an enlightened mind after all i have anointing after all i can pray after all i'm spiritual it takes more than that as far as your excelling is concerned jesus did not just wait until he was 30. even before we see him praying we saw him in the temple learning when satan came to him he didn't say i assume he said it is written are we together you must obtain grace from god to sit down dear nigerians especially the young population let's sit down and learn this this passion to run around and have premature manifestation sit down sit down we must obtain grace from god but apostle i went to school you know it's not enough you must sit down there are three levels of education there is unlearning there is relearning there is learning there are things you have to unlearn there are things you have to learn as new there are things you have to relearn as emphasis if these three levels is not happening to you you are not really educated education is not just an awareness of a body of information no you must unlearn deconstruct many belief systems that are wrong you must learn then you must relearn it is unlearning learning and relearning that is education i will say it again if you want proper enlightenment not just spiritual enlightenment secular enlightenment you must unlearn you must learn you must relearn develop your mind ask any ceo the difference between an exceptional ceo a fulfilled politician 
a technocrat an intelligent person one who is doing much for the kingdom a great man of god our fathers of faith are all over this nation we love them we honor them we admire them can i tell you something one consistent thread that runs across all the fathers of faith in this nation is that they are exceptionally brilliant people mention one dull one and you'll be the first mentioning it and the only one mentioning it there is no dull father of faith that i know who is making global impact because ministry is more than preaching preaching only accounts for at least 30 percent of ministry there is administration there is leadership there is diplomacy there are all kinds of factors involved in ministry for them to win this much it is the holy spirit in partnership with an enlightened mind we have this idea that god just landed on them and commissioned them find out their labor find out the things they do the little that we are doing for God here, we can feel the heat and the disadvantage of not being enlightened. Please, I encourage you, from families to institutions, religious and secular institutions, business and all of that, we must settle down to contend for knowledge. Settle down to contend for knowledge challenge yourself to be enlightened and don't let the devil make you think that what i'm sharing tonight is not important it is absolutely important the destinies of people are tied to your rising and your greatness it is selfish to refuse to be great because more than yourself there are people who will eat from the fruit of your greatness are we together so discovery and then refining when you begin to refine your mind and refine your gifts it ushers you into the next phase of your season of preparation called the season of testing write it down the season of testing oh dear i wish i had time the season of testing can I tell you this? If it is God you are doing business with, before he commits to you destinies, before he commits to you anointings and graces, you must be tested. Genesis 22, please, from verse 1. We're still looking at the life of Abraham. And it came to pass after these things, Remember Genesis 12? Abraham has an encounter with God. He begins his journey. Ten chapters later, we see him stepping into the next phase. It came to pass after these things that God did what? Tempt. Some verses will say, test Abraham. What was the test? Abraham, he said, behold, I am here. Next verse, please. He said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, Take note of lo only and lovest only son whom thou lovest get thee into a land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell you verse 3 here's what the bible says and abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and clave the wood for the bond offering and rose up and went on to the place which god had told him we'll continue later on but look look at this look at this god tells abraham i want to make you a father of nations i will bless them that bless you cause him that causes you in thee shall all the families be blessed in other words i'm going to make you the landlord of the earth he willed the earth to abraham are we together now and then abraham did not know that as he kept obeying god transiting he would get to a point where god will now say now we are getting to the season where prophecy and destiny is about to be activated but not without a test the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that everything that was happening was a test but abraham did not know it was a test can i tell you this this final phase of your preparation season is the hardest phase for most people ask any great man they will tell you the season of test is a season where you have to obtain grace from god the season of test will test you across three things number one it will test you across trust 
and integrity you will be tested you will be tested you will be tested your capacity to be a person of integrity will be tested beyond measure number two the second test is the test of patience the test of patience i can tell you this if it is god who is lifting you he will stretch you from pillar to post man of god let me tell you what he will do to you as a great man on fire god loving you your pastor just looks at you and says you are going to be the person opening the gate at the church you look at the potential of your anointing compared to the miracle that just happened before you came and say pastor sorry i hope you know that two among these 10 testimonies came directly from me and yet god says go and do it can i tell you this the test of greatness achieves many things among them it must humble you to your lowest otherwise it's not god lifting you some of these insulting derogatory experiences we go through the man of god may not know god is using him to test you nobody knows that it's a test is it's only god it's not like men know if a man tries to test you he's not god it is at the end looking from hindsight you will know that it was not about isaac it was not about abraham it was about god saying for me to commit this kind to you this is where many people fail they fail the test can i tell you this the test of destiny will insult your pedigree the test of destiny will turn you sometimes you look at yourself and say i'm not a fool be careful the moment it starts looking like god is just allowing things to fall your hand like we call it be careful there are people today who would have become mighty men and women of god if they had submitted themselves to cleaning the chair they say no way I can't be carrying this heavy prophetic grace especially when you are serving and your superiors may not seem to be as gifted as you maybe someone is in that face right now listen carefully I've trained the leaders in this ministry to understand that anything at all God gives you do it with all your heart you do not know what season you are stepping into are we together go and ask many great men do you know what stephen was doing before he became that mighty man stephen was part of those who were serving tables there are many great men today who started by scrubbing the floors of their ceos and while they were scrubbing the floors they would hear discussions happening and they were cleaning all kinds of things while their contemporaries were saying i'm too big they were saying no 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 i love the lord father it's a privilege for me to do what i'm doing the moment you are too big to be tested you are also too big to be great or too small to be great dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto break kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.